What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Ace. Over the last few months, Lightroom has come out with some significant updates that allow you to edit portraits very simply and easily. And in this video, I'm going to take you through my entire workflow of editing a portrait that I shot and show you some tips and tricks along the way that you most likely didn't know that Lightroom can do now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on the screen and get started. So first things first, one of the things I like to start with is balancing out the exposure of the image. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually drop down our highlights a bit because you can see on the face, there are a bit of a hot spot right here. However, the camera did retain a lot of that detail, so it's no problem. We can dial that back as much as we please. I think that's looking pretty good there. You can see also over here in the top left corner, we were able to bring out some more detail here in the clouds and the sky. That's looking pretty good. Now, another thing that I do want to uh, change is bring out the shadows just a little bit because there is a lot of detail here in the hair that we can pull out. So let's go ahead and increase our slider just a little bit there. That's looking good. Now we can actually see the color of the hair and a little bit more of the strands here is a lot more detail, it looks better to me. That is looking good there. Now, another thing that I wanna show you guys real quick is the uh, auto masking feature, right? So if I go ahead and click on this, our mask feature here, <clears throat> You can see that automatically generates the person and it quickly masks them out and it is extremely accurate. But the really cool thing here is if you click on that, it actually allows you to fine tune this and only select what the options it gives you here. So for example, eyebrows or just the skin on the body or the face. So for this example, I'm gonna actually go with the face skin. I'm gonna go ahead and click create mask. Now I just have this mask overlay color green because I find it a lot easier to see and make my edits and adjust accordingly. However, you can actually change this simply by holding shift and O and you can see it change it to white, to more of a brown, dark color, red or green. So you can actually change it however you'd like, whatever is easiest for you to see. However, for me, this is what works. So I'm gonna click on Z real quick and zoom in just so it makes it a little bit easier so we can see what we're doing here. All right, so we created this mask, right? And now the next step is I'm going to actually smoothen out the skin so we can get a better balance of skin tones and remove a little bit more of these uh, textures. Now, you can see that it is bleeding to her eyelids and the nose and around the lips. Let's go ahead and clean that up. You could do so by clicking this minus button right here, and then we're going to click on brush. This basically creates a subtraction of the mask that we can now paint in or deduct, so to speak. Now, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is these are my settings right here, minus, uh, or I'm sorry, 100 for the feather. If you don't know what the feather is, so you can see on my cursor here, if I drop down to zero or a hundred, what that basically does is it smoothens out the edge of the brush, that roll off, that fall off, whatever you want to call it. And it just makes it a little bit easier to do uh, deductions like this, where it's not such harsh of a uh, an edge. Okay, so for starters, I'm gonna start here on the eye because we don't wanna really smooth out anything near the eye, especially the eyelashes. It'll just look a little bit funky and uh, yeah, not something I recommend. So this is one of those things where you don't need to be extremely precise. We can pre be pretty liberal here. Um, and then I'm gonna actually just have uh, the reduction of this mask a little bit outside of the lips as well. Like I said, doesn't need to be very refined or exact. There we go, that's looking good. Now I'm gonna also do the same here with the hair because it's bleeding into the hair just a little bit. You can or can't do this. I mean, it's really up to you, but to get the better result, obviously it's going to look a little bit better if we refine that mask just a little bit. All right, now something that's really cool that you might not know is Lightroom actually already has a few custom presets for you, or pre-saved presets, I should say. If you come over here to your mask options, you can click on this custom effect, and it has this drop-down menu of a lot of different things you can do with this mask. Now, one of the things I want you guys to look at is it has an option for soften skin and soften skin light. So. It's going to do exactly what it tells you. It's gonna soften the skin. I clicked on light 
because you can actually refine this however you want. Now here in the adjustments panel, you can see the uh, adjustments that it just preset for us. So for example, clarity drop down to minus 15, texture minus 35. Now personally, I think this is looking pretty good, but if you wanted to increase it or make any sort of adjustments, go ahead and feel free to do so. Now I'm gonna actually close this panel and I'm gonna go to our spot healer brush tool. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually remove a little bit more of these slightly larger, uh, somewhat distracting blemishes. And you just click on that and Lightroom's going to automatically generate another section that it's going to clone from. And generally this is pretty accurate. So you usually don't need to do too much in terms of refining it. And I'm just gonna quickly go through here just a few blemishes down here and here. These little hot spots can be a little distracting sometimes. And uh, I think we're looking pretty good. All right, let's see how that looks. You can see here, it didn't exactly clone properly. So let's actually go back to that one. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And you can see for some reason it uh, cloned all the way out here. We don't need anything that far out. Maybe just something like this. Let's see how that looks. It's looking a little bit better. I'm gonna actually just come in here and change this one as well. See where that's cloning from. And I'm gonna actually, oops, you can actually make it bigger or smaller. What I meant to do is just grab it, drag it down here, and then that'll give me a much better result like so. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom back out here. Now, another thing that we can do is um, click on our mask layer once more, and I'm gonna create a new mask click the plus symbol here, and then click on the brush. I'm gonna zoom back in here, and I'm gonna actually brush in just the eye, right? There we go. So what we're gonna do here is we're just going to bring out some detail and whiten the, the uh, sclera, I think it's called. All right, so from here, we're going to just increase our exposure just a little bit. And then I'm gonna increase our shadows, bring out that light or that catch light right there. Something like that I think looks really, really good. Awesome. Now from there, I'm gonna actually adjust our colors just a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna come here to clarity. I'm gonna actually boost that up a little bit just so we can get a little bit more detail across the entire image here. Something like so. Our vibrance and our saturation, I'm gonna actually keep as is, and I'm gonna show you guys why. So I'm gonna come down here to our HSL tab and here is where I typically like to make all my color adjustments, simply because I have way more control over selecting each individual color and how it reacts to the actual image. So, for example, I wanna change the color of the blues just a little bit, make this a little bit more uh, unique, so to speak. So, with that said, I'm gonna go to Hue. I'm gonna click on our little eyedropper here, and I'm gonna select one of our blue tones. So, for example, here. I'm gonna go ahead and click, and drag up, and you can see it's gonna change our tones just a little bit. You see? Now I like more of this uh, aqua type color for this type of image. Now I'm gonna do the same for here, and I'm gonna see kinda how that reacts. You see, changes a different tone of the blues, right? So I'm gonna actually bring that a little bit more to the uh, cooler side, so more of a, the aqua, if you will. Something like that is looking really, really good to me. Awesome. Now, another thing that I wanna do actually, now that I changed all that, I can see that the skin tone looks a little bit, uh, a little bit too hot for me. So I'm gonna actually drop our temperature just a little bit down to the left, cool that down just a little bit. That is looking pretty good. Now in doing so, you can see that obviously all the other blue tones changed, but not to worry, I can actually come back here and adjust that, make that a little bit more subtle. There we go, awesome. Okay, now from here, another thing that you can do is you can adjust the luminance of the colors. Now, if you're not so familiar with luminance, I mean the best way or easiest way right now to describe it is essentially the brightness <laughs> uh, of a particular color. So in this instance, I want to uh, make the skin tone just a little bit lighter. So I can go ahead and click on that, slide up, and you can see it gives me a slightly brighter tone. Now this is looking really, really good as it is. However, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna actually sharpen up the image a little bit for one. 
This is one of those options where a little does go a long way. You don't particularly need a lot to really sharpen that image. But also another thing that I want to do is uh, change up our, our split tone in here. So let's see, we can actually go to either our shadows, our midtones, our highlights. You can use the, this uh, tool where it shows you all of them. However, I like to uh, just do something like this and go through each individual one itself. Now, what I like to do is basically pick a very, very uh, drastic color and dial it back if I like it. So for example, let's see here. I like a little bit of these pinks and purples, right? So the luminance, you know, we can dial that back and really get an idea of how things look if we boost it up or dial it back. But going back to what I was saying, we exaggerate it and then we kind of pull back just a little bit and kind of see how I like it. See something like that I think looks really, really cool. And if you're ever interested in seeing kind of the before and after of your, your adjustment, you can see here, oh, I'm sorry, up here. See just that little bit hint of the pink really does take it to another level in my opinion. Now let's go to the midtones. Now the midtones I think look pretty good as is. I don't think we need to really adjust much, but let's go ahead and play around with it. Maybe we can see something really, really cool. Blues, maybe a little bit more of the greens. Let's see what that looks like. Dial that back just a little bit. See the before and after. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that actually. All right, now to the highlights. Highlights, I actually really like how they are right now. I don't think they need much. But once again, let's go ahead and play around with it because this is just typically what I do. Let's see how it looks with a little bit of orange in it. And then click and dial that back just a little bit. Maybe a little bit more here. There we go. Now let's see the before and after. Yeah, I actually just like it at zero. I'm gonna keep it at zero. However, like I said, we adjusted the shadows, which I think brought out a really nice color here in the shadows and the midtones. I think this is looking really, really cool. Now, really, I'm just going to finish this off quickly by adding a little bit of a vignette. And uh, to do so, once again, Lightroom makes that really easy. We can actually come down here to our post crop vignette drag our slider in a little bit. Now here's a tip that you might not know and something that I use actually all the time. I'll actually drop this down to minus 100. So it makes it a lot easier for you to actually see what you're doing, okay? So from here, I can actually mainly change the rounding point, the roundness of our point here. And I'm gonna kind of balance it out so that it's kind of even in terms of how it's affecting our edge here. And then our feathering is what I'm gonna also adjust here bring that up quite a bit. Now, once I kind of got everything dialed in, I'm going to now dial back the amount of the vignette. Okay, there we go. Something like this looks really, really good. Now, as you can see, here is the before and after. That was a quick edit. We were able to smoothen out the skin, edit the eyes, add some split toning in there, customize the colors, and everything looks really, really nice and polished. And that was only done in about 10 to 12 minutes. And guys, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things that you didn't know you could do within Lightroom. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel continue to grow. And if you're interested in more content like this, be sure to subscribe as I will be coming out with a lot more tutorials like this and ones that are way more in depth as well. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.